Hey guys, Mike from Lunch Money Comics here with a slightly different video for you today. I feel like I just got started on YouTube. I've only been around for about four months, so you can imagine my surprise when I found out this is actually my 30th video. It blew my mind, you know, I guess time flies when you're having fun. And I always try to put out videos every single week, usually on a Monday. That's like my bigger upload, usually like a, a flea market or a comic book show. Sometimes I'll put out a video on like a Friday if it's shorter or if, you know, it's a little bit off topic. But I'm always filming. I'm always out there hunting for comic books, filming little snippets here and there. But a lot of times I'll only get like one or two comic books and it's just not enough to make, you know, its own video. On top of that, I have a lot of ideas for content and a lot of suggestions from a lot of you. And they're always kind of simmering on the back burner and I can never find the right time to sort of do a video on them. So I actually want to go over several topics today. Just, you know, knock them all out of the park with a single video, starting, of course, with some comic books that I found. Uh, these are comics that I definitely found in a strange and unusual place, and I'm pretty excited to show you what they are. And then I want to answer some questions. Questions from you. In the four months since I've been on YouTube, I've received dozens, maybe hundreds of questions down in the comments section. I always try to respond to them, but it's kind of difficult to answer a question adequately, like in a couple of sentences. So I thought it would be cool to answer the questions in a video. If you've ever asked me a question down in the comments, or maybe you just wondered about something, Definitely stay tuned for that part because um, I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability. And hey, if you've ever asked me one of those questions, uh, your question might very well pop up. So let's talk about the comic books. I always end my videos by saying keep looking for comic books in strange and unusual places because I find comic books everywhere, guys, all over the place. You'd be amazed at where you can find them. You just need to look, you know, in addition to finding them, at, you know, the customary flea markets and yard sales. You know, I find them at pawn shops. I found them at church tax sales. And in this case, I found them in a library. One of the local libraries near me uh, has a big book sale a couple times a year. It lasts a week and, you know, they have a basement area full of books that people have donated over the years. And it's a great deal. You can get a hard cover for $2 and a soft cover for a dollar. So I've been going for years, you know, just filling up my book collection and getting reading material. But the last day of the sale, everything is half price. So that's what I was doing. I went on the last day trying to find some cheap books, fill up a box or two. And to my amazement, I found some comic books. They were actually in the kids section and uh, there was a good stack of them. What's interesting about them is like they're all modern books and they're kind of beat up. They're not worth that much money, but a lot of them are variants. I've never seen them before. I thought they were interesting. And because it was the half price day, they're considered magazines, which are normally 50 cents. So I got them for a quarter each. So 25 cents each for some new reading material and some interesting looking covers. Absolutely. Let me show you what I got. First up, we have Secret Wars number one. This is from the 2015 Secret Wars series, and this is the Alex Maleev variant featuring Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. And uh, the thing with this variant and a lot of the other variants in this stack is that they're Newbery Comics variants. So, you know, the person that donated these either shopped there exclusively or, you know, they worked there. And, um, you know, I've never read this series. I've heard good things about it. I'm excited to have some new reading material. But I was actually very surprised to find out that this specific variant cover can actually go for a little bit of money online. I think I saw like 15 to 20 bucks if it's in good condition. This isn't in great condition. I consider this a reading material and a really cool cover. But hey, very ha happy to have this for 25 cents. Next up, we have a pretty cool comic book. This is The Unstoppable Wasp number one. This is from 2016. And of course, this is a Scotty Young variant. Uh, a lot of people love Scotty Young. He has a very whimsical, cartoony style. Uh, it looks to me very much like Calvin and Hobbes, I think is what he's going for. And, uh, and because he's so collectible, I was not that surprised to find out that this variant can go for a little bit of money. I think I saw it going for like 30 bucks in good condition on eBay. And, um, you know, this one's actually in pretty good shape. Maybe it's because it's mostly a white cover. You don't see a lot of the, you know, the tick marks. But hey, it's a pretty cool comic book. And both my kids thought the cover was great. Next up, we have a couple of, uh, I guess you'd call them action figure variants. The first one is the Champions number one. This is from 2016. This is featuring uh, Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider as an action figure on the cover. I know these can be somewhat collectible. I saw some of these going for like 10 bucks online. But the other one I like a lot more because it's X-Men. This is Uncanny X-Men number one. This is from the 2018 series. And this shows an action figure of Psylocke uh, right there on the cover. It's a nice fat double issue. I don't think I've actually read uh, this series. So I'm happy to have this one as reading material. And uh, yeah, these are worth a couple bucks. They're not worth that much, but they're cool to have, right? Next up, we have another fun book. This is a giant size Little Marvel Avengers vs. X-Men number one. This is the Pascal Campion Newbery Comics variant. 
Uh, and this story here was written by and drawn by, of course, Scotty Young. You see the whimsical, you know, Calvin and Hobbes type art. I really like the Avengers vs. X-Men uh, series. I have the entire run, so I'm happy just to add this to my collection. I'll toss it in there with the other books. But of course, you know, my kids thought this cover was fantastic. They were pretty engaged looking at it. So another cool book, happy to own it for a quarter. Next up, we have another cool one. This is Monsters Unleashed number one. It's from 2016, and this is the Arthur Adams variant. Um, I love Arthur Adams. He's one of my favorite artists. I especially love the way that he draws monsters and creatures. So I'm happy to add this one to my collection. Next up, we have three issues of The Mighty Thor. So this is the 2016 series by Jason Aaron featuring Jane Foster as The Mighty Thor. This is issue number one. This is the Chris Stevens Newbery Comics variant. Uh, pretty cool because it's a number one issue and it's a variant. It can go for a little bit of money. Uh, the other issues are not variants as far as I can tell, and they're not sequential, but uh, we have number three here and also number six. So I think a lot of people saw Natalie Portman play the Mighty Thor in the most recent Thor movie. I've never read this series. I've heard decent things about it. I think it was pretty well received. Uh, if you've read it, let me know down in the comments uh, what you think of the series, but pretty cool to have three books from it. So we have some completely random comic books coming up now. This is Weapon H number six from 2018. This is a J. Scott Campbell cover. I know some people go nuts over J. Scott Campbell. It is a pretty cool cover of the Fantastic Four, but I don't think it has any other significance. This is an unusual one. This is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer verse sampler for season nine. It's from 2013, and as far as I can tell, it's sort of just like an anthology of different stories. It looks like a lot of first issues of the major characters to sort of, I guess, whet your appetite before season nine. I never watched uh, Joss Whedon's um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you're a Buffy fan, but I thought this was pretty cool. The art in it is excellent. The last one is definitely the most unusual one. This is published by America's Best Comics. This is issue number zero or Omega. And what this is, is a, a book of covers of the Promethea series. Promethea was written and created by Alan Moore and J.H. Williams III. And what this issue is, is basically just a book of covers from that series. Now, I'm not familiar with this series whatsoever, but I will say the art is pretty fantastic. Um, let me know down in the comments um, if you ever read the Promethea series. Let me know what it's about. I know nothing about it, but it's still a really cool book of art. I'm happy to have it for a quarter. So I got one more thing at the book sale. I'm always on the lookout for like cheap comic book trade paperbacks. And I found this. This is a bone chapter book, or I guess a trade paperback. Each chapter is a different comic book that came out in the mid-90s. Of course, Bone is created by Jeff Smith. It's a very beloved uh, comic series. It was a little after my time. I never read Bone, but I picked this up because I was interested to see what it's about, and I thought my kids would enjoy it. If you are a fan of Bone, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of it, why you like it, and let me know if this was a good pickup for 50 cents. So there you go, guys. I got 12 modern comic books and a trade paperback for $3.50 at a library. Like I said, you can find comic books absolutely anywhere. You just need to look. Um, I have one more thing I want to show you. A recent pickup. Might as well kill another bird with this stone. Uh, I was in an uh, indoor flea market with my son. Didn't really find any comic books that were interesting, but I saw this. So this is a long shot figure from 1993, still in the package. I actually had this when I was a kid. Have no idea what happened to it. Um, it had a price tag, I think, of $12, and it was like 25% off. So for 9 bucks, I got a cool long shot figure uh, at a flea market. Uh, pretty neat. I'm going to put it on the shelf behind me. Just thought it was worth showing to you guys. So we finally arrived at the question and answer portion of the video. Like I said, I've received tons of questions down in the comments fields of YouTube, but I actually get some questions on Instagram as well. And that's my first question that's going to come up right now. Um, because this is from Instagram and not YouTube, I'm going to blur out the picture and the last name of this individual. Um, but this guy, Corey, asked me some kind of personal questions and I'll do my best to answer them as vague as possible. So Corey's first question is, what is your full-time job and how do you balance that with your hobby hunting in YouTube. Um, I don't want to get too much into my, what my job is, but I'll just say it's in the civil engineering field. Um, and in terms of how I balance that with hobby hunting and YouTube, well, whenever I'm out hunting for comic books, that's on the weekend. You know, my full-time job is during the week and I do most of my comic book hunting um, on the weekends, rarely like after work. Um, in terms of YouTube, well, most of my YouTubing is done um, after everyone is asleep. My whole family's in bed. Um, I am a night owl. I am a uh, insomniac and I'm up very very late at night. 
I often look at my videos, guys, and I wonder like why the bags are so bad under my eyes. And some of that might be like the lighting in this room, but mostly it's because if you see me sitting in this chair talking, it's almost certainly like midnight or later. Uh, as of right now, it's actually 12:15 uh, a.m. when you're watching this, so uh, that's when I do it. I'm a pretty busy guy; it's the only time I can actually do it. Um, Corey's next question: How do you convince your family to allow you time to go out hunting? Um, I just leave really early in the morning, especially if it's flea markets. I go super early. Um, you know, obviously early bird gets the comics, but that way it doesn't, uh, interfere with like family stuff too much. Um, however, I'm a little sneaky, uh, in my footage, you know, although clearly I've had videos with my son, you know, where he's there with me at like a comic book show, but I've actually been to locations with my family and I just kind of strategically film that you don't see them. So if you watch the video, it looks like I'm there by myself. No, my family's there. In fact, one of the days I was at that big flea market, Brimfield, my wife loves antiques and she was next to me the whole time. I just never filmed her. So, um, so yeah, sometimes they're with me. I don't need to convince them too much. Corey's next question. Do you have a specific amount of money that you hunt with and balance that with what you flip, sell and keep it all rotating in the collection? Um, yes, I keep a separate bank account that is just for like my buying and selling of not only comic books, but antiques and any other stuff that I want to collect or have, you know, and if I ever do get money, you know, rarely from selling things, but if I ever get money from like, I don't know, Christmas or something, it goes in that fund and I use that to like buy things with. Um, it's just a great way to make sure that like your play money is separate from your like house money. And I recommend, uh, everybody to do this, especially if you're a collector. It also keeps the wife very happy, by the way. Uh, final question from Corey. Do you cut current books? Why or why not? Um, not right now. I was before my channel. So I was collecting uh, lots of modern books and reading them, but honestly, I just couldn't uh, keep up with them all. I was especially <laughs> trying to read X-Men books, and there are so many different titles, guys. I was getting lost with all the stories. It's not like uh, it used to be in the old days. Um, it seemed a lot harder for me to keep up with the storylines, and honestly, I was putting a lot of money into these modern books, and I just wasn't reading them. They were just building up. So I decided it was better off to like put my money towards older books I wanted to add to my collection, things I've always wanted, um, you know, the money that I put aside for flea market hunting, the money I put aside in that special account. Um, it was better to, you know, use it that way than to buy more modern comic books. Um, when I do want to read modern stories, I'm more likely to buy like a trade paperback or like an anthology, you know, of like a, a whole storyline. It's just easier and more digestible for me. I'm a pretty busy guy. And that's why I'm not into current comic books, at least at this moment. Bather12 asks, do you collect runs or just keys? Yes, I definitely collect runs. Um, I've mentioned this in the past. I usually collect storylines first, like, you know, Dark Phoenix Saga or like the Inferno Saga. And, you know, when you do that, you end up kind of like filling in chunks of a run. And then I'll just kind of go back and fill in the gaps. So right now I'm collecting um, basically like X-Men 94 all the way up through, well, basically everything Chris Claremont has ever written for X-Men, uh, including a little bit of like New Mutants and things like that. So yeah, I do collect runs. So here's a fun question. Chadwick Gray asks, wondering what was your first comic and do you still have it? Mine was Incredible Hulk 365. Anyway, love the channel. Uh, I love that question. So um, when I first got into comic books, when I was really little, we actually had like a family friend who gave me a box of comic books when I was probably like seven years old. And um, I don't know, there may be like 40 or 50 comic books in there. Most of them, like 75% were DC comics and most of those were Flash. There were a couple of like, uh, you know, cartoon, Roadrunner, Bugs Bunny type things in there. I think there was a couple of like horror ones in there and like two Marvel books. So um, I do have a lot of those still, but I think a better question is, what was the first comic book I ever bought? Um, so my family has a place up in New Hampshire. We're out in the woods and um, there is like a convenience store gas station like down the street, a couple miles away. It's the closest place you can like buy anything. And when I was about eight years old, um, me and my sister were down there, the whole family was down there and we were buying comic books. And at the time we were really into like 80s cartoons. So my sister bought a Care Bears comic and I bought three different ones. I bought a Ewok comic, a Transformers comic, and a Ghostbusters comic. And here's the thing, I still have them. So here is the uh, Transformers comic. I just remember thinking it was cool um, and mysterious because there was a robot fighting like knights in shining armor. Kind of cool. These are from 1988 because uh, that's when I bought these. Um, and then this one here, this is the real Ghostbusters. I really like the Ghostbusters uh, in the 80s. And the third one was actually an Ewoks comic from the Ewok animated series. There was a cartoon in the 80s. Um, I saw that book recently. It was really beat up, like borderline destroyed. I read it a lot uh, and I couldn't find it for this video. Maybe I did throw it away, I'm not sure. But yeah, I still have most of those comic books and I still fondly remember them. Omar Looney says, hey, I came across your videos just recently because I just got into collecting comics. 
I really like your channel. I'm new to this kind of stuff. What would you recommend for a beginner? I actually get this question a lot and my answer is always the same. Collect what you like. That's it. If you're just getting into this hobby, you know, like buy some different titles, look around, see which covers jump out to you. Uh, maybe some recommendations from a friend, but like buy some stuff and start reading. And eventually, you know, you will gravitate towards one style or another or one genre or another. Um, that's it. If you're trying to get into the hobby to like make money, I don't really recommend it. Comic books should be fun. You should be enjoying them and reading them. And listen, I grew up in the 90s during that first big comic boom. I remember everyone thought like comic books was going to make you rich. And you know, I got caught up in all that. Like I would buy all those gimmicky covers, you know, and all those chrome and foil and all that stuff. But I also bought comic books that I wanted to read. And guess what? 30 years later, I can tell you that those gimmicky comic books aren't worth anything. But all those books I like to read are actually worth money because they're good. So I just say this, whenever anyone asks this, collect things that you like, because even if they're not worth anything monetarily, they're worth something to you because you enjoy them. Um, it's as simple as that. That's my recommendation. Look around, you'll find something you like and just stick with that. So here's a question I get all the time. Jason Palath asks, little off topic, but what are you using for shelving behind you? Jim O'Dell also asks, Mike, where did you get the wall display you have behind you? I really like it and want one for my toy room. So I assume they're referencing these sort of white strips that are holding up the books against the wall. So what those are are vinyl wall panel dividers. Um, I got them at a major hardware store chain. And um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of wall panels they are or what they're used for. Basically what they are is just like thin pieces of vinyl that like a thin wall panel would slide into. And there's different kinds. There's some with like a groove on one side. There's some that have like a beveled or curved edge. These particular ones have a groove on each side for two panels to go into. And it just so happens that they are the exact width of like one comic book in a bag and board. So I actually saw those at the hardware store, um, said, hey, that would actually work for a comic book, you know, holder. I didn't want to put shelving up there. It'd be very expensive and they'd stick out too far. So I got a whole bunch of them. Again, they're super cheap. And um, I just, you know, put the first one down, leveled it, and then I used a comic in a bag and board as sort of a spacer for the, the subsequent ones. Use little tack nails to knock it into the studs. And that was pretty much it. I'll make sure I put a link in my description to exactly what I use for this. Uh, if any of you are interested in replicating it. A word of caution though. Those of you who have been watching my channel may have noticed I don't change those books out very often. When I did that, I thought, oh, this would be great. The books slide in and that's all you need to do to hold them in there. The problem is if you want to change one, especially like if it's in the middle, you have to slide all the books out to do it or you have to bend the book, which obviously you don't want to do. Um, so for all those reasons is why like those tend to be just like reader books and just cool looking ones. I don't put like good stuff up there. Uh, that's it. That's all I use. I, sometimes you could improvise guys. It was a much cheaper alternative than shelving. Oh boy. Another very common question. Donut Junkie 2525 asks, mind if I ask, where do you sell the comics you find? L Green Machine, where do you sell your comics at? Loud Lament, do you have an eBay storefront? William Gehring, what is the link to your store? And Dragon One, I will buy them. Please send me your eBay store name. Okay, so yes, I have an eBay account. Of course I do, but it's a personal one. It's one that I use and my wife uses to buy things and to sell stuff. And yeah, I do sell comic books on there from time to time. However, I do not have an eBay storefront. I don't often sell comic books. If I do sell comic books, I'm far more likely to trade them or sell them like in person. But here's the big thing, guys. I started this channel for fun. I didn't do it to make money. And um, I definitely don't want this channel to be a platform to sell things. Um, you know, especially like the whole point of my comic channel is, you know, buying comic books cheap, you know, finding them at flea markets and yard sales, comic books I enjoy that I really like. There's very little like financial um, discussion going on other than what I paid for them. And um, honestly, I just feel a little uh, disingenuous if I said, hey, look at these cheap comic books I, I found and you can buy them for more money on my eBay storefront. <laughs> and, um, you know, and even if I, I didn't promote those things like on my channel, if I had an eBay store like with the name Lunch Money Comics, I would still feel very disingenuous. So um, that's just not what I'm about, guys. You know, I want this channel to be fun. I don't want it be, to be tied with anything uh, financial. I don't want to be promoting this stuff. I think it would definitely compromise the message at the very least. Now, listen, I'm not knocking anybody who does that on YouTube. I mean, to those people, they're going to have much better comic book collections than I am. Good for them. I absolutely applaud them. But honestly, like one of the weird things when you start getting lots of views on YouTube is that, you know, companies come out of the woodwork and they want you to like promote their product. And I've had a couple of those people like solicit me, you know, and a lot of them have nothing to do with comic books. But, you know, one of them uh, will remain nameless, but it is a, uh, a very well-known um, 
auction application that a lot of people sell comic books on now. And, uh, you know, it can be quite lucrative. Not only are you selling comic books, you know, in an auction format, but, you know, there are kickbacks. You know, people um, are referred to it or sign up because of you. You get some money. And I'm just not going to do it, guys. I'm just not going to do it. That's It's not for me. Um, that's not what my channel is about. So um, that's a quick answer there. I, I don't really sell things publicly. If I did, I'd probably be very quiet about it. That being said, you know, um, I have sold things inadvertently through my channel. I had that big uh, video about all those toys I was trying to sell from my great aunt. I know I mentioned them on my channel. I thought people would like it. And I had a lot of viewers. At no point in that video did I say, hey, if you want to buy these, you know, contact me. But as soon as that video came out, I had a million people message me in uh, social media asking about the toys. And that actually is how I sold a good chunk of them. But one, there wasn't comic books. You know, again, this is a comic book channel. I felt like that was just like a bonus thing to talk about. And secondly, um, you know, I, I wasn't soliciting that. Like, it just kind of happened that way. So, um, and listen, if there's a, something you see on my channel that like you can't live without, yeah, that's fine. Contact me. Maybe we can work something out. I love trading. But in general, yeah, I don't have a storefront. Uh, I'm not going to sell things on my channel. It's just the end of it. Jet City Comics says, do you ever find that most conventions have overpriced books or are they reasonably priced? I've never seen reasonably priced comics at conventions. That's a great question. Um, but the answer is a little bit more complex. Most big vendors... Um, the ones with like the really good books, you know, the big guys, that's their their major business. Um, yeah, they tend to be overpriced. And, uh, you know, some of that might be uh, because, you know, the, the 2021 comic boom, you know, the prices went way up and maybe they just haven't, you know, brought the prices down or maybe they can't. Maybe they just don't want to lose the money. Um, and it just so happens like big comic book conventions, like those are most of the vendors, They're the big ones, because it's probably expensive to get a table there or a booth. So, yeah, the prices are in, in general higher. But I go to lots of small comic book shows and in my experience. Those guys are definitely not overpriced. I think for the most part, you know, they're sort of kind of competing with each other. If you're on a small area, you know, like they know, like if they don't sell their book to you, like someone else around the corner might have it cheap. And most of these guys, you know, it's not their main source of income. It's not their job. It's a side gig. So for those guys, you know, I think they're more likely to part with comic books cheaper. So um, it's a complicated question. In general, yeah, they tend to be overpriced, but it depends on the show. And most importantly, it depends on the vendor. Here we go. Eric House asks, Hey, love your channel. I was curious what editing software you use. Uh, he then goes on to suggest some like editing programs for like ambient noise reduction and stuff. Um, and I've gotten several comments specifically on my sound. I'm aware of the sound issues, guys. Um, but to answer the question, and this might be shocking to some people, I film and edit my entire channel. I do everything on this channel on my cell phone. I'm looking at my personal cell phone I carry in my pocket pretty much 24-7. Um, it is an iPhone 12 Pro, and I do everything in it. The only thing on my channel I don't do on my phone is the thumbnails. And I have in the past, but it's just, it takes longer and it's tedious. So those I'll do on the computer, but everything else I do in my phone. And listen, I have better cameras, I have better microphones, I have better computers, and better editing software. But I insist on using my phone for a couple of reasons. One, it's extremely convenient. I'm always looking for comic books, and it's great that I just have it in my pocket. If I come across a yard sale or something, I have my camera right there. Um, secondly, I kind of feel like it fits into the whole, uh, motif of Lunch Money Comics, you know, like I was buying comic books with whatever I had in my pocket and, uh, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I'm making a YouTube channel just with my cell phone. I just kind of like it. Um, that being said, I do have some sound issues and the biggest reason is I do have some microphones I bought specifically for the channel, but the input on my phone broke. So I actually have to only charge my phone using a magnetic charger and I can't put anything, especially like... Uh, a lav mic or a Bluetooth receiver in the end of the phone. It doesn't work. And that's why there's sort of a tinny sound. I'm basically like yelling at my phone right now. So I apologize to those of you where the sound is bad. I'm hoping to get my phone fixed and actually get a real microphone like a real YouTuber is supposed to do. But yeah, that's the answer. I do everything in my phone. It's an iPhone 12 Pro and I use iMovie in my phone. And that's it. Okay, Zandals Comics and Cards asks, do you ask permission to film? I want to film in stores for my channel, but I'm always afraid of ticking people off. Um, yeah, I do, especially if it's like an intimate setting or, you know, it's really close quarters and um, it's clear like what I'm doing. I'll always mention to the person like, hey, you know, do you mind if I film this for my YouTube channel? Um, and usually, you know, that'll start up a conversation. They ask about it and it's kind of cool. Um, at larger places um, or like outdoor flea markets, uh, no, I mean like, I'm very discreet, you know, I, one of the benefits of using my cell phone as my camera is that, you know, I could be, I could be doing anything and most people don't even notice and they de tend to not mind at all. The one thing I am very careful of though is showing faces. I almost never show people's faces and, uh, and you'll notice like when I'm like 
dealing with a vendor or something, um, my camera's always angled down, you know, at the comic books. It's just not even really a conversation I necessarily want to have. If it's unavoidable, you know, I'm filming like the inside of a store, I'll often ask the person like, hey, you know, do you want me to edit you out if, if they come up? And, and I have, in some cases, someone's like, yeah, you know, you can film the store, but don't show my face. Um, I've gone back and I've actually used some like blurring technology to blur their face. I've done it actually on, you know, like um, cell phone numbers on like business cards. I've done it on license plates. So yeah, there's a, a couple tricks you can do to like really protect that sort of stuff. But in general, I just try not to have it be an issue whatsoever. I don't show faces uh, and unless I have explicit permission from someone to do so, I often don't use their names as well. So uh, when in doubt, just be respectful and it never hurts to ask. Okay, so Benjaz says, I hope you share your 12 rules of buying one day. Chris Torres, would be great to see one on your rules. Brian Com, so you have to do a video about your list of rules. Very interested to see it. So what they are referring to is uh, I have a list of rules on my phone to help me buy comic books. Just like little lessons I've learned to help me, you know, make sure I don't overpay for things and I'm actually collecting the way I want to collect. And I've mentioned it several times on my channel. I think I've even mentioned individual rules. The thing is, as great as these rules are, I never listen to them. I, I never check that list and I still make mistakes. And um, although I mentioned a couple here and there, um, the list is sort of a mess. I actually decided to check on it once I saw these questions. And, uh, you know, it started off as like five rules, went up to 10. Now it's like 13 and a half ish rules. And it's just like a stream of consciousness, things I've written down over time. I definitely need to kind of go in and consolidate some of the rules, you know, definitely curate the list a little bit better before I'm willing to uh, throw them out there on YouTube. So I apologize to you guys who have asked me this question. I'm not going to go through them right now. However, the reason I bring it up is that I get lots of great ideas from my viewers down in the comments, great ideas for like videos. And I really appreciate that. So because these guys asked this question, I think there were others that asked the same thing. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'll make sure I do a video or like a, a half of a video, a segment on my 12 rules of buying once I go through them and clean them up. And I just want to say thank you to those of you who give me really good ideas. Absolutely keep them coming. So there you go, guys. That was my question and answer portion of my channel. Um, I actually have a lot more questions here that I don't have time to get to. I'm pretty sure this video is going too long and I already know it's going to be a really tough edit. Um, but definitely keep the questions coming. Uh, I really enjoy them and uh, the ones I haven't got to, I will definitely try to address in a future video. As usual, if you like this sort of stuff, guys, go down, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Obviously, I like responding to them. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Find me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. In the meantime, I hope you keep finding comic books in strange and unusual places, including libraries, I guess. Uh, and once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.